the penalty if indeed he went before a court martial and they found him guilty of desertion given all the circumstances and everything. Speaking of that, they got a um, an execution that took place in Georgia uh, yesterday afternoon. Man convicted of killing a fellow inmate was executed. Uh, I don't know what his original crime was, what got him into jail, but he was executed for the death of a fellow inmate mm -hmm. in Georgia, which is interesting. But he declined to request a special last meal, and he ate the institution's meal tray, whatever that might have been. They didn't even say what it was. That food will kill you. Yeah, regular prisoner stuff. <laughs> Uh, we were talking earlier about Bo Bergdahl and the fact that we feel a decision has been made, but it hadn't been announced. And uh, Brian Buffard joins us right now, criminal defense lawyer and former U.S. Navy JAG lieutenant commander. Uh, JAG being the judge advocate general means he's in the law part of the military. And Brian, thanks for joining us on AM Tampa Bay. Why are they waiting so long to release the findings that apparently were arrived at several months ago. Hey, good morning, y'all. Uh, that's a great question, and, and I don't have a good answer for that, uh, other than there's really nothing that requires them to release them to the public at any time. So they're, they're playing it close to the vest. The law allows them to do that, but, but I still think that, that leaves open the question of why has this thing taken so long. And ultimately, if he is found to have uh, engaged in desertion by this committee, he then, uh, I, I guess that's kind of like a grand jury, and then he would go before a court-martial board, right? Well, that, that's, that's almost correct. Uh, right now, we are, we are pre uh, the, the grand jury type of, of decision-making. In other words, right now, the convening authority, General Milley, he's the one who will decide whether or not this case goes to court, what kind of court it goes to, what the charges will be, all those things. He hasn't made any of those decisions yet, or at least we, we don't know that he has. So once, once he gets all the information before him, he makes the decision, all right, what do I think happened here? What is the appropriate result? And, and what is the appropriate way to get to that result? One of those things, the most serious uh, option would be a general court-martial, and that would require a, an Article 32 investigation process, which is that analogous uh, to a grand jury uh, process. So okay, yeah. that, if that's going to happen, that's probably still weeks or months away. Didn't they already issue back pay? You know, I don't know if they've issued it. I think that they've tallied it. Uh, I don't know that they have given that to him. And, and I think that's at least a, a minor consideration for the government about, you know, if they feel that he's done wrong and they want to prosecute him, they're, they're going to try to do so in a way where he doesn't get that back pay. Brian, but, uh, if found, again, if found guilty, way. what is he facing? If he, well, that, that depends on what he's charged with. And uh, in this case, it, it's, it's a wartime desertion. And so in theory, it, it is legally possible for the convening authority to say, I'm so upset about this, this is so egregious, that I want him charged with desertion, and I'm going to refer it as a capital case and try to get the death penalty. Wow. Uh, I, I don't think there's any real chance of that, but it is legally possible. Uh, I guess life in prison is a possibility, or maybe five years, ten years, hard labor, or something like that? All of that is, is, is on, on the table, including no punishment. Uh, no punishment is also on the table. Well, they, uh, we were talking to Colonel Warshuk, uh, Jim Warshuk, the other day, and he was. we had pointed out that we heard when all this happened that when this guy had deserted, that at least a couple of his teammates had lost their lives going out and trying to to retrieve him, to get him back. And Colonel Warshuk said there were even more than that, maybe as many as five or six guys had been killed as a result of his uh, alleged desertion. Right. And if that were the case, I would think you'd almost have to give him the death penalty because he contributed to the killing of, of our own military guys. Well, potentially, but that, that, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily prove that he knew or intended for those deaths to occur. Well, that's true. Um, yeah. You know, and that, that's what's required in any, in any sane system of justice. Yeah, so that's ho true. Hopefully that, you know, the, now, and I will say that, that that issue is extremely relevant, no matter what they charge him with, that issue is extremely relevant on sentencing. Yeah. That's a very strongly aggravating fact that the government can, can introduce to show why Sergeant Bergdahl should be punished towards the high end of the spectrum. Well, Brian, we certainly appreciate your input, and we'll be talking to you again as this thing
perhaps comes out at some point. Criminal defense lawyer, former U.S. Navy JAG Lieutenant Commander Brian Bufard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.